Welcome back to another video in which we will be unlocking all dungeon chests in Outlands, starting with the Mausoleum, Part 1. Before we get into the dungeon, I'm going to go over my build, I'm going to go over my loadout, and my script. For those of you who have been using my script, know that I've been updating it since the last video, so just go ahead and copy-paste. It's a lot better. <laughs> and so a link will be in the description. So I'm still using Harvest Aspect. Uh, Fortune's also good. Guys, if you're using Fortune, it's good too. I mean, in the end, there's not that much difference with how much money you're making. Harvest just comes out a little bit ahead. Uh, so, and then uh, my links, I'm up to 23 links now. We've got that chest success chance slash progress. That's helping me unlock chests faster. That's amazing. Uh, we've got our earth elemental. Uh, just know that when you're building your earth elemental, and uh, you can't build an earth elemental with this build, but you have to switch and figure it out another way to, you know, a different build to actually get experience for this. But all you really need is Spirit Pact and Earth Pull. Everything else is extra. The uh, the extra that I like is just tankiness, just pure tankiness. So just, these ones are all tanky, but Spirit Pact and Earth Pull. Okay, build is still the same. Uh, I still like this. I'm not uh, increasing camping. Um, and... Uh, and my loadout here. So <clears throat> something I realized about the loadout that I didn't know in the last video is that you can carry 10 potions and they'll only equal one stone. So you can also carry one potion and it will equal one stone. So you might as well carry 10. Um, now, similar with the, uh, your regs are, regs are kind of weird. Uh, just sort of watch your weight as you're, as you're uh, using those, as you're adding those rather. Um, I try to just minimal. Um, I'm using a Verite uh, pouch here now, just so that I'm not wasting too many regs. I can carry less, and they're they weigh less. So I yeah, I'd recommend using a nice one just just for the weight benefit. Uh, we got our smoke bombs. We've got our potions. Potions are all ten now. Now I've got fifty ropes on me now. Um, I didn't know this, but uh, twenty five ropes equals one stone. So, and I used slightly more than twenty five, so I'm using fifty now. Keep that in mind, guys. You know, I've got uh, 78 stones here. Also, if you get this adventurer satchel, it will it will take away the weight, all the weight of your items, your blessed items in here. So very handy to get one of those. They're a little expensive to make, but I'd highly suggest getting one just because it's going to reduce your bag weight. And uh, so, yeah, we got our potions. Um, it's pretty important to have one of these cleansing brews if you're doing level eight chests. If you get hit with a, a bleed from a level eight chest, it's pretty hard to survive without one of these because I think the bleed does like 75 damage per tick. And uh, yeah, that'll that'll end you pretty quick. Upgraded my armor a little bit. I just wanted a little bit more tankiness. So my armor's up to 75 now with of course tier 15 aspect. And uh, that's it for the build. And the loadout so let's just look at the script real quick i have a february 23rd update and i'm pretty sure this is going to be the last update i mean it's uh it's pretty much all i need right now so i've got a recommended build in here uh, of course you can swap that out with stealing if you this build this this script will work just fine if you're using just stealth uh it's, it's really mostly for stealth if you happen to have Spirit Speak, it's going to do some extra things, but only if you actually have 80 or more. Um, and then Stealing. So also, break down here. Um, if you're a Summoner, you want to use Spirit Pact and Earth Pull. If you're a Thief, you want to use Overlooked and Without a Trace. Um, required, again, is the Object Delay. Now, this gives you the, the an edge over other lockpickers who are using other scripts uh, because... Uh, if, unless they're doing this, of course, but this is going to loot chests as fast as possible. It comes as, as a little bit of a trade-off because it will occasionally incur an action delay depending on your ping. Um, but so long as there's not too many, if you're not seeing too many of those, I mean, you shouldn't, then uh, this is the fastest way of looting possible. I, I'll, I'll see like a, I'll incur an action delay, maybe one, one every 10 chests or something like that. So for me, it's, it's the way to go. Um, if this is causing you problems, leave a comment in the section and let me know, and I'll see what I can do about that. Trade-offs, right? Okay, so next, of course, hiding in stealth. You want the cooldowns. I showed you in the last video how to do that. It's pretty simple. Um, I'd really just recommend leaving them at zero. This 
four seconds, just probably just, you know, unless you really know what you're doing, don't even bother with that. Just leave them at zero. Okay, so optional. So we've got our blessed wizard hat thing. Uh, this is very powerful. Also went over that in the last video. We've got our war mode. I went over that. And we have a new feature that I'm calling ACP or auto chest protection. This only works when you are currently at a chest and you've got it enabled. So it's default off, uh, but let me explain what it does. Uh, when another player detects you with the detect hidden skill, mind you, just the detect hidden skill, not the reveal spell, it will automatically respond to that player detecting you. I've got four different options. I'm, ca I'm calling them stances. I'm calling them lock picker stances just because it's, you know, whatever. Outland has stances. So I've, I've kind of made my own sort of de facto stances here. And they are wall, earth, teleport, reveal, or none. And you can set yourself in these stances while you're at a chest so that you have uh, the ability to respond to these people who like to reveal you and get you killed at basically no consequence. So it's sort of a middle finger to them because uh, that's such a cheap tactic. Uh, so I figured I'd come up with my own cheap tactic. So I'll show you how that works as we go through the dungeon. And uh, yeah, it works on an atlas. So if, uh, and the great thing about an atlas is it's weightless, it's free. You can, there's a hotkey for it, which is really good. So you can hotkey this and not interrupt the script. It's pretty awesome. And then, uh, okay, then also we have optional just rename your treasure column there's two now because uh, i've updated the code for the elemental uh, it does a couple things uh, extra but uh, really you're not going to notice anything except for if you want to rename there's two lines you have to rename it because we're going over uh, i needed to separate these so i could create different variables for them and uh yeah maybe more on that later um, for use outside the script but for now we'll just leave it there so that's about it Let's get into the dungeon. All right, here we go. So uh, I totally forgot about these spare parts. They have an AOE attack, and this is just me for <laughs> not, not commonly doing this chest, but uh, yeah, careful. They throw torsos at you, and those torsos explode. So um, I've got uh, Earth Elemental ACP active right now. So if another player reveals me, I would just instantly summon an Earth Elemental. Um, just, uh, you know, not really needed here because this is not a very dangerous part of the dungeon. So let's carry on. And here I try to be uh, pretty cool and sneaky. And again, I just, <laughs> I forgot. You know, it's very good practice to put your Elemental into guard mode uh, or stay. Use guard or stay before you approach a chest because you don't want that guy next to you. So this is me making some pretty pretty silly mistakes but it's level one you know so i'm gonna i'm gonna fix that mistake here i'm not gonna i'm gonna say guard all right there you go there now now we have no problems with uh, exploding torsos so as i go through the dungeon i'm gonna start getting pretty ninja here um not a lot of real need for an elemental in such such easy areas so you'll see as we go through this and uh, I get a little bit of an action delay. You see the skill cooldown up there? You're not going to see that. That's just me because I have uh, overhead messages enabled in Razor. There we go. A little bit of ninja. And I uh, fucked that up. Oops. <laughs> Excuse my language. So I'm sitting here just trying to hide. And, you know, I just really, really bad start. <laughs> If you're doing this, you're kind of screwing up. So, but don't worry. We're gonna get we're gonna get into the groove of things here. Sometimes you don't get your morning coffee. Okay, let's go. Now I'm not doing any specific routing here. I'm just literally hitting all all the chests that exist. So, uh, yeah, just so you know where they are and you know what mobs are around them. Got another spare part there. Yeah, it was pretty close. Pretty close. I could have done better there too. So yeah, I actually, uh, the, the amount of times I do these chests, is very, I basically never do them. You notice some spam there. I added that spam in intentionally 
just to make sure that that button is being pressed. And it has there's all kinds of sort of weird, janky things that can happen with lock picking, and uh, just doing that just makes sure that you know just reinforces that the script is going to work as fast as possible. We got a couple imps in here, no problem. You know, they're magic users. Uh, no threat of any kind of AOE coming from them. So elemental placement hardly even matters there. Okay, I'm going to hold the teleport here and I'm going to fail because that gravestone blocked my my uh, line of sight. So be aware of that, you know, if you're going to do uh, teleport up to a chest. Just make sure you got a clear line of sight. And uh, you see we're opening these low-level chests very quickly because we've got those special loot links. Or sorry, the uh, chest progress progression links. So that helps. All right, we're going to get a little more ninja here. Enough of this elemental. Now, the script is going to hide you at a chest faster than what it used to do. Um, there used to be a little hang there that I intentionally put in there. It's about a, about a, just about a half a second hang. And uh, I decided to get rid of that. Um, you know, you got to be a little quicker on the keys. You got to be a little quicker with what you're doing. Um, sort of increases the the surface area of of um, error, but it's faster. I didn't get it there because I just ran up, so I just I'm gonna invis myself. Uh, invisibility is just huge. I mean, you can precast an invisibility and just run right up to a chest and invis yourself, so long as you don't take too much damage on the way. And we're gonna rope, open the door, and rope. And we'll go into uh, the goo room. All kinds of goo in this room. And we'll just have a little seat in this chair. Really fast hiding now, if you guys notice. As soon as you get up to that chest, just be careful. Get your finger off that button, stop moving, and let it let it work. Okay, and we got one across the hall here. This one I got in just in time. I uh, broke my line of sight with the calamity there, and I was able to just hide to the chest. Now, that was a little risky. If, if he still had my line of sight, I would have had to cast an invisibility there. And if the invisibility didn't work, I would smoke bomb. So smoke bomb's kind of like a last resort type thing, and you always want to have that ready to go. So we'll get out of there and we'll come up here. These abominations have an AoE attack. Just be careful. Uh, before we go up there, I'm going to do this one. You, you want this handy little trick, and I missed. Okay, try that again. This is a handy little teleport here. Of course, if I, I didn't flub that the first time, I would have hit no problem. But we're just going to invis ourselves, no problem. Again, just keeping that earth elemental, you know, I, I, it could be off. The ACP could be off right now, but, you know, I don't, I don't really expect anybody even to be revealing me at these low-level chests. All right, I'll go back up here to the abominations. Just be careful, these abominations, you know, they, they do do a, a lot of damage with their AOE. So because of the, because of the approach to the chest, I, I figured I was going to get some aggro, so I decided to, to just use invisibility there. That uh, you'll notice, like as I approach these chests, there's a variety of things that you can do to drop aggro or to avoid aggro. Sometimes you can just run right up to them, and the mobs will ignore you because you hide so fast. Other times, if you teleport from a distance, you know you'll you'll be right beside the chest, like way before mobs will even notice you. Um, also, smoke bomb, also invis. So nice little hidden chest in here. Now, despite these being all level 2s and 3s and some 4s, there's actually a decent amount of, of gold in, uh, up here. I typically don't ever come up here just because I, I just run straight for Maz 4 and then do things in reverse. Um, and then I typically won't even, won't even do these chests. But, you know, hey, it's, not, it's not actually that bad. Okay, I screwed that up. Okay, but we still got a line of sight on that guy, so not bad. This room, uh, it's just got nothing really dangerous here, nothing really AOE. 
Um, there's a lot of mobs, so you will get a lot of aggro. So just try to be quick. Okay, and I always go up here first because this is the only spot in the game. Okay, I had to, had to invis there because the gladiator was after me. Naked gladiator. Someone, I guess he's got a loincloth on or something. Uh, I always go to this chest first because these two chests are so close together and they're different z-axis, so one's above the other. If you go to the one below, the script just doesn't like picking it up. It just always wants to try to open the one up top. So if you do go below, you're going to probably have to manually click that chest or just go do the top one first. Okay, I'm going to smoke bomb. Got too much aggro. And when you do smoke bomb, uh, just notice that you can cancel... Smoke bombing is the only thing that cancels um, the spells that are cast, like being cast on you uh, by a mob. So it, it just, they completely forget you exist when you smoke bomb. So you'll notice that you can smoke bomb during their casting animation and give yourself a little more time to move. And uh, so long as it's uh, not a meteor swarm, really the meteor swarm and chain lightning are the only ones that will go through that. All right, so we're gonna teleport to this one, no problem. That's really kind of, you know, when you're being speedy, that's really kind of what you want to achieve with the script is to just teleport and uh, right next to a chest and it'll just hide you right away. Now, I will mention, though, my teleport script is not the lockpicker script. So when I'm using my teleport script, I have a statement, um, which I showed in my in a previous video, how it loops into the lockpicker script instantly. So as soon as I'm done casting, it goes right back to the lockpicker script. I don't have to press a button, it just does it automatically. So yeah, I wanted to summon elemental here because the um, <clears throat> the chests in these rooms are a little awkward to get to and you can stumble over doors and stumble over things. It's just kind of, you know, sort of technical to move around and get in there. Difficult to teleport to, got some line of sight issues. So <clears throat> in this case, an elemental will help. That was me drinking water. And let's just get out of there. Head on down in this room. Now I'm pre-casting teleport and teleporting right next to the chest. There you go. Now you want to be within two tiles of the chest. So you got a little bit of leeway there. World of Saving. This is going to screw up our, our uh, script just a little bit sometimes, uh, but it's no problem. It doesn't have to be replayed. Just notice that, yeah, yeah it'll, it'll start spamming a little bit if the world saves while you're picking. Okay, I didn't make the didn't get the uh, hide off there, so let me just invis. Uh, if you're not running a lock picker without majory, I don't know what you're doing. If you're running some kind of dex based lock picker, I don't know what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> I, I I don't know why I went up there. Just just randomly just went up there. <laughs> the hidden chest is down here. I kind of forgot about that for a second. Yeah, just a little little one tile entryway there. And you can get access to this level four chest. These mobs just don't do much. You know, they uh, some of them have the similar kind of AoE attack that the spare parts have. So just, just you'll see, they'll puke a bunch of like gross stuff at you and then it'll start exploding. All right, that was pretty good. So this is the last chest in this video. <clears throat> so this has been Mausoleum Part 1. In Part 2, we're going to do Maus 4 and Maus 3. And uh, that'll conclude our Mausoleum adventure. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.